Alrighty, alrighty, good evening and hello! Let's turn the volume down. Here we go. Now I no longer echo, but you can still hear me, and I don't have to hear myself, and that's... Sometimes that's enough. So, uh, yeah, good evening once again. How's everybody doing? Welcome to a another evening of tying flies. Just pulling myself up here on the old monitor. And, oh, we'll stash you way back over here. There we go. All right, so how's everybody doing? Jacob, good evening. Thanks for tuning in. Boy, oh boy, are we in for a treat tonight. Uh, yeah, crease flies. Has anybody here tied a crease fly? Um, I know I've been talking about it probably for a few weeks now, and I finally got around to doing some uh, um, R&D, some research and development on, um, on the crease fly. Um, I'll get into it a little bit more here in just a few minutes. We'll give it a give it a couple. Let people uh, tune in, join in. Dave, good evening, Dave. Thanks for joining me. Hey, good to see you. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be really curious to hear everybody's opinion on crease flies. And have you ever tied one? Have you ever fished one? What's your experience with it? I've tied a few. I have never fished one. Truth be told. Um, but, uh, from what I understand, you know, it's originally a saltwater pattern. Um, I guess it was originally, I don't know exactly what fish they were fishing for, but it was a saltwater pattern. They, they basically get out there, chum the water and, uh, you know, throw this crease fly out there and it just slaps the surface and the, the fish just go bananas for it. Hey, Paul, thanks for tuning in. Have you ever fished a crease fly? What's your what's your experience? Um, uh, I talked to the other Dave, Dave Coleman, about it the other day, and while well, I was doing some R and D on it, and you know, I guess if I remember correctly, he said he didn't uh, have too much success with it, and you know, it kind of f- f- flops on its side. You know, how does it really uh, fish in the water? And I'm 90% confident I've uh, come up with a, a decent solution. So as always um you know what 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 thou'st be witnessing tonight um is by no means uh the one and only way to tie this crease fly um it's a method i've kind of stumbled across after watching um uh, a bunch of youtube videos and uh, doing a little bit of research and uh, this is what I've come up with, and it's pretty cool. I'm going to hit my mute while I slurp my coffee. So, yeah, wonderful weather we're having today. Not. Boy, oh boy, it was a great day to be a duck. Lots of cold, wet rain and uh, some thunder uh, some thunder showers, thunder snow, depending on where you're at and how bad it was coming down. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. Thunder snow had some cool stuff. Most of the snow is melted off of the driveways and the lawns and stuff. You just got the snurt piles, the snow dirt piles lingering around. Um, so. Jacob says he would love to attempt to tie one up, but he can't lift his arm high enough. Just had a surgery a few days ago. Oh, my goodness. Yay. You know, take care of yourself. Um, you know, I've... <laughs> it's it's interesting. You know, I've been... I just saw on, on my personal Facebook page my Project Healing Waters uh, first batch of flies. Um, at, you know, where they are, who knows? I probably fished or lost all of them. But um, when I was in for my PTSD recovery program, it was like a six, eight week long um, inpatient program. And every time I got uh, back to my room from Project Healing Waters, I took my flies and I just stuck them on a little pushpin board, bulletin board. And then at the end of the week, I, you know, labeled everything in medicine bottles and packaged everything up and brought it home with me. And, you know, I don't know. So uh, seven years this many years we've been um, tying flies, and I believe we in February we hit the uh, 
I think it was like five or six years on uh, here on YouTube. Um, and as far as Project Healing Waters live streams, I didn't really catch it, but last week was number 50, 50 weeks of uh, Project Healing Water uh, live streams here on Wednesday nights. Uh, it would have been the 51st, uh, however, comma, that was on account we missed one day on January 6th. And today's the 10th, so next week, ladies and gentlemen, marks the, the one year of uh, live streaming here on Wednesday nights. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, getting vaccinated and being able to uh, physically face-to-face uh, tie flies uh, and teach once again. Um, but I think it's going to be a lot different. Um, you know, kind of my previous methodology and how I, I used to teach, you know, is you're right up on you. It's right up, you know, the hands are hands are almost touching sometimes and, you know, you're pointing and you're really up close and personal. So, you know, it's going to have to be something uh, that I get used to. So, I don't know. We got six of us here tonight uh, thus far. Uh, be sure to smash that like button, hit the subscribe, uh, bang that notification bell, if you will. I don't know. YouTube likes it, um, I guess. I used to, it used to be kind of a big deal for me, you know, how how f big you can grow my the YouTube channel. But you know, at this point, it's just a platform for me to share what's behind me with you guys and gals. So let's spin my uh, silly self around and uh, tie up some of these crease flies. Uh, let's see here, bada boom, bada bing. Got that going and spin myself around carefully. I gotta find a spot for my coffee mug. All right, get a little bit of light in the uh, little bit of light in the house and so yeah here we go the crease fly um, so I'll kind of go through some of the evolutionary steps that I personally took as far as coming up with this and some of the different iterations um, so a while back I tied something like this um, you know just a blue piece of foam I found some kind of fish scaly uh, stuff I stuck on there just some bucktail and it's on a big old streamer hook, a size two uh, streamer hook. And, you know, it's like, well, this kind of started to wet the whistle and uh, got me intrigued a little bit with the, with the crease fly. And, you know, lo and behold, when you toss it in a bowl of water, that's how she wants to ride. Um, you know, I'm sure if you start giving it some pull and, you know, it's relatively narrow. You know, not too much... Um, mental um, investment got into that and then I came across this technique and what I'm going to be using today is uh, I believe it's a two millimeter um, craft foam could be four millimeter I would have to bust out the scales but it's the it's, it's your average thinner of the craft foam and I started experimenting with some uh, different UV uh, resins and uh, we stepped it up to a, uh, a Daiichi 2720 uh, specialty hook. I got these bad boys at the one ot And, you know, if I'm tying a crease fly, I might as well tie a good-sized crease fly, um, in my opinion. So, um, I don't know. I kind of got this different colored resins that um, I started working with. And then... You know, I got some of the green, and I like the uh, the red bellies on there. Um, and it's actually the, it's a fluorescent red. And under the UV light, boy, everything in here just absolutely pops. So I got uh, some green ones tied up. You know, I, like I said, I had to tie a few of these to get myself comfortable enough to actually put myself on camera to show you all. How we do this and then I stumbled across this yellow when I started experimenting with some uh, marker on the back to give it a little bit of uh, color and definition uh, you know what I say imagination being your uh, your only limitation 
and the latest addition to the uh, crease arsenal is the white with this red belly. Um, how they're all going to exactly fish and swim, I'm not 100% certain, but I'm 100% confident that each and every one of these will, will trigger a fish once we're in the water. Um, and a little bit about the the design that I took and the inspiration that I took in the profile of everything um, is I kind of looked at uh, one of Dave Coleman's uh, black popper heads and uh, I don't know I kind of kind of uh, I don't know has that same kind of that same slope uh, for the size and I wanted to keep the front end nice and nice and square so that's that's kind of where I, I drew the the inspiration for those ones um, and then it was just a matter of um, messing around with a pair of scissors and uh, foam and coming up with a uh, shape that I like and this is it more or less and uh, you know I'm sure I'm sure you could cut it a lot better. It could be cut a lot better, but you know, I think at least for me here today, tonight, today to now, um, you know, it's gonna be one of those close enough is good enoughs. So I'm gonna be doing an orange one. I have a little bit of foam for a pink one. And if we have enough time, uh, we got a bonus fly, a bonus. It's a black foam. And on it already was this uh, kind of iridescent, greenish, goldish, uh, sticky stuff already stuck on there. So uh, if we can get to that one, we'll get to that one. But we're going to start with orange, orange. And let's go ahead and find our hook. So like always, you know, this is... This is a way to tie these. This is how I'm tying them. Um, and there's a ton of other great YouTube videos out there and different resources on on tying these. Um, but I, I like to be just a little different and add just a little slight twist to what we got going on. So we'll let you in on the little secret here on how, how I keep these... Uh, crease flies to at least ride in the water um, you know it with this profile and I've done some experimentation and it I think it's gonna work out uh, we're gonna at least find that these ride um, right in the top of the water column um, you know if not just just barely floating right on top um, you know they're not I don't think they're really gonna be designed to be fished like a popper I'm not expecting um, I'm not expecting as much splash that I would get out of something like this out of something like this. I mean that's you know this is this is designed to create a kersploosh. That's kind of a big one, but here we go. You know this is this is gonna create a big splash. This is gonna get some action in the water, but you know just as far as comparison, this is gonna definitely put the splash and the crease is going to fish a little differently i'm really excited to uh, give that a try hey ben good evening thanks for tuning in all right so like i said i've got these uh gamugatsu or not gamugatsu's uh daiichi's 2720 one ot all right and you know the beautiful thing is is the thread it really really doesn't truly truly matter and I happen to have some red 70 denier. And we're just going to start this right up front. I'm going to go back just a little bit. Lock that off. Because what we're tying in, it doesn't have to be... We're not reefing or wrenching on it like a big old heavy duty streamer. Because the magic all happens... Uh, when we start applying the UV resin and glues and junk like that. So here is my secret ingredient to these crease flies. There you go. Some lead-free war. And at 0 0.025, that's 
tens, hundreds, twenty-five hundreds, tens, tens, hundreds, twenty-five hundreds. Yeah, twenty-five. Oh, twenty-five thousand. Tens, hundreds. Yeah, anyways. Um, but watch how I tie this in. I'm not going to wrap this around the shank of the hook. I don't want to don't want to wrap this around. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck this in on the bottom side, right underneath. And I give myself a an eye's length or so behind the eye, eye eye. And we're going to tie that in working our way from the front to the rear. Right about there at about the hook point. Maybe not quite there. I'm going to give it a few extra wraps of thread and then just break that off. So what I have here is I have two parallel wires. One is uh, a hook, hook shank, and the other is uh, this lead-free wire. And right nestled in between the two, I'm going to take another piece of this wire. And we're going to kind of eyeball the uh, front end up so it's right about the same length as the um, front of the previous wire. Once you get that going, we'll bring our thread forward a little bit and then we can just twist off this other bit. Keep working our way forward just like that. So we've got our, our hook shank, our wire underneath, and our wire on the near side of the hook. And guess what? We're going to do the same on the other side. Draw that in. And I found that if you just kind of do your first round, you don't have to reef down on it super duper tight. We're just positioning at this point. Get it all the way to the rear. And whenever you go to helicopter your, your soft wires off, you really want to make sure you've got um, enough thread holding that in, locking that down. James, good evening. Um, good news, bud. Your vice is on its way to me. And then I will turn and burn, return it to you, get it to you. As they say in all these British shows I've been watching, uh, post haste, post haste. All right, so let's work our thread all the way to the rear. We're going to tie in our tail. We're going to cover the rest of this all up on our way um, to the front side. All right, right about that, right before we get to that bend of that hook. And we're doing our what? Our orange one we're going to start off with. So, um, you know, like I said, we want this to kind of uh, track towards the, the surface of the water. So we're thinking light, we're thinking um, buoyancy. Um, and what else could be as buoyant as some um, hot ass orange uh, bucktail? I mean, bright OSHA orange bucktail. What color do they call this? They just call it orange. But I think with our orange and our orange, I think that's a good good combo. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna go. I don't want. I don't want to grab off of the the lower region. I want to go about midway up. I want to. I don't need too much, too much length, um, but because if we go down here, I'm going to get a lot more flare. And I don't want too much flare, but I'm not going to necessarily take it directly from the, the tip. Not quite a, a pencil's worth as you grab it. We're going to trim that off nice and close off. I'll grab a couple of these super long ones and clean off the bucktail. Always clean your hair. Give it a twist, pinch and twist. If you give it a pinch and twist and kind of roll the hair in your, um, between your finger and your thumb, kind of like you're almost doing a dubbing, very slightly though, just to loosen it up a little bit. There we go, get that nice and clean. Oh, hair stacker, let's go ahead Go with a nice big one. Helicopter that in. And then we're going to give this a stack. I'm going to hit the mute button. Because I really don't know how loud uh, that came comes through when I'm stacking here. 
but I don't, I'm not going to concern about having a, you know, a super, super, super tight stack. Loose stacks are fine for me. All right, let's measure this out. That's a solid hook's length. Let's go a little bit more. So that's a, a hook and a little bit more. I like that. Hook in a little bit more. Let's tie this in on the top side. Some nice tight thread wraps. Remember, I'm I'm using a little bit um, a little bit slender of a thread here. So you know, with the 210 denier, you could easily get away with a lot a lot more a lot more tension. I got to be a little more methodical. All right, give us a nice little taper on the top side. Nice. Nice transition is what we're looking for. We're not, if you get a, a, a big ledge or a shelf, your thread pops and bops. And we're not necessarily looking to pop and bop our thread. Not at this time. Not yet. Um, let's see here. Do I want to do that? Let's get our Mr. Bodkin. I got a couple. I need to flip around. Right underneath, I'm going to do a couple wraps, a thread right underneath, and this will help prevent everything from looking sad. All right, so there's our tail. We got a tail going. We got Smart Mouth. Good evening. Thanks for joining tonight. It always amazes me. It's just, you know, all the media or multimedia devices out there all the things that that we all could be doing you know here we are tying flies together or at least I'm tying and you're watching <laughs> I'm looking for a little bit of a little bit of flash I think we'll just go with the white crystal flash look at this stuff this is uh H2O twist pearl, but it's like four times, twice the length as your typical crystal flash. So if it's twice as long, we only need about half as much. So I'm just going to grab a couple of strands. One, two, three. We're going to multiply by dividing. It's amazing how this just works out. And any of these oddball ones are just a little too long. And, you know, like just like the bucktail, you know, I want it to be kind of kind of stacked, kind of not. You know, what? I'm going to go right about halfway. And I want my flash all the way around. I'm going to fold it back and make sure we got it all the way around. 360 degrees is what we're looking for. I like that. All right, we're going to work our way forward and we're going to do our best to lay a nice even thread base working our way all the way up front. And this is going to be where we lock everything down in on. And like I said, I, I got a 70 denier, not even a it's not even a 140. But it's red, and I want to use red, so I got to wrap the wrap the the living wrapness out of it. I'm not even paying attention. Work my way forward. And I'm keeping my left hand. I'm gra I'm I'm holding the hook as well as the vise because I'm just using a good amount of tension because I'm wrapping I'm wrapping 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 all right nice solid coverage from the rear to the front and a little bit of a dip a little bit of a dip there but it's a nice relatively seamless transition all right and that's it for tying let's go ahead and Throw a whip finish on that, and I'm just doing another one. 
just because we can. It's a small thread. All right. We are done with our th bobbin for now. We'll set that off to the side. Okay, so we're doing our orange. This is this is where we're at. We've got our body. We've got our, our weight. Our weight is all on the bottom side of the hook, right? So once we get this applied to the top portion, it's almost like a little keel. And we have some width here that we're going to have to contend with. So in addition to this, I also have this piece. And we're going to do the red one first, kind of get that position, and then we can adjust our uh, our outer foam, if you will, at that time. So I'm going to do this in a couple of stages. Um, and I'm sure there's um, other ways to do this with just uh, super glue or zap a gap or, or whatever. But this is the, like I said, this is the method that I've come across that works best for me. And um, I'm just going to share this with you guys. So I'm going to start with some solar res thick hard. So the first application. I'm just going to lay a bead right on the top part of the shank. Give it a squeeze. And it doesn't have to be thick. We're going, it's thick so we don't have to be. But I am going to add just a little dab right at that ramp, a little bit more, and a nice even bead all the way across the top. And what's beautiful about the UV product is I don't, not in any particular rush as far as time. Now gravity will ultimately start affecting things and things can start drooping and swooping um, but until then time is not too much of the essence. So let's take our first little triangle and you'll want to shape these to whatever you want. We're going to just set that carefully right on top. And this is our inner foam. This is kind of like the meat of the taco. All right, and this is just our kind of first positioning. It's not really stable yet. Um, you know, and even after this first zap of uh, the flashlight, I, I, it's really not secured yet. I'm going to add another layer of um, UV on here. And again, you know, this is on the bottom side, so, you know, having a little bit of weight towards the bottom, I, in my humble opinion, I don't think it's going to be a, a bad thing. I think that's going to help this thing uh, float. Uh, and track it at a, at a proper level. So I switched from my thick hard to a thin hard. So the thick is, uh, uh, it's a thicker viscosity and the thin, it's thin. What can I say? But it's not quite as thin as the bone dry. And my objective here is to connect a little bit of resin from the side down to the shank. And this is what I think really helps us bond um, and, and secure everything in place. So I just got to touch a little bit on the side of the foam and a little bit onto the shank. It's almost like a little weld. But I'm doing it with resin. This is going to hold it up on the side. All right, once that's set, we'll set it and forget it. Give it a good zap. and. When I go to actually glue the um, the outer foam to the inner foam, I'm not going to use this UV. I'm going to actually use uh, some Zappa Gap to uh, actually secure it um, in place. Because this is great for covering and stuff, but you know, as far as actually securing it permanently, I want 
a little bit more. So just a nice light layer connecting that all. Just kind of going up on the edge a little bit. And you can really see it more of a as a as a reflection. Because when I was experimenting with this uh, earlier, you know, I did that first bead of just the thick, and I started manipulating this, and it just popped right off. You know, it, it had something to seed onto, but it just needs a little bit around the uh, around the edges. So let's go ahead and set that off to the side. Now we have our orange piece of foam. And this is our opportunity to kind of fold it around and see if we need to trim it all. I don't think I'm going to have to. I like leaving a little bit up front, almost for like a little recess. I think that's going to do us just good. All right, so let's go ahead and prepare our Zappa Gap. I've got an old old bottle of Zappa Gap that every time I every time I want to use it, I've got to ramrod um, an old bodkin into it. But you know the glue still works. I'll tell you that for free. But it is a pain clearing this tube out every single time. Okay, so a little dab of glue. This is Zappa Gap, and we want to be careful with this. So it's just a, a just enough to wet it on that side, and same over here, just enough to wet it, because it's pretty darn Zappa Gappy. All right, and then it's just as simple as taking our outer foam. We'll give that a nice pinch. And when I was monkeying around with some of the, um, you know, iterations earlier, I was having some problems getting it to actually stick. And I found that you know you could just take a chip clip or anything you want at this point, and that'll help seat that in place. And we'll just give it a few seconds. You know, Zappa Gap is it's not super duper quick, um, but you do got to give it a second. What it does uh, dry really quick too is your fingers. I don't know how a product can take its time adhering wood, plastic, metal, glass, jewelry, but it, you know, and it takes a it takes a while for it to for it to actually do its thing. But boy, and how the second you touch it with your finger, you're stuck. Has that ever happened to you? It always seems to stick to your fingers more than anything else. So, so after that long little story, that gave us some time here, and everything seems to be stuck in place. Here it is on the front, and it just leaves a little kind of a hollow cup front end and we're going to fill that in with uh, some resin here in a minute but you know it's not a, a flat flat front end all right so we're going to go upside down at first because I want to um, kind of reinforce and seal um, that bottom end yep everything's nice and nice and dry so like I said I've kind of discovered um, let me adjust the camera just a little bit. There we go. You know, these uh, more solar res products. A lot of solar res going into this tonight, boys and girls. Um, but if you're using it, you could probably just use like a, a five minute epoxy or some sort. Whatever your favorite um, sealant is, uh, go ahead and go for it. And I think at this point, you know, honestly, if you just wanted to just leave that as is and just fish it I think that's kind of the bare minimum kind of cutoff point I'd probably add a little bit more glue to the inside if that's all I was going to do but 
because I'm having fun with this uh, these Solarez products. Um, we're gonna have some fun with this. So this is the fluorescent red, and I've discovered that I really like putting this on the bellies, and it's thick enough, and I'm covering enough of a surface that I can actually just go right off the brush and bypass the bodkins. So it's just a matter of carefully painting this on the bottom and what I'm keying in on, my, my main purpose is to really uh, connect the two sides with the shank in between. And it's not super thick so I don't have to go super fast with it. And it's just like painting painting on um, fingernail polish actually. We'll be oh so careful around the eye of the hook. Let's see if I gotta I can turn this this way. And this is actually a little bit better of an angle for me for this far side. And I'm just going on just the bottom. And there's a little bit kind of seeping into you know, the crevasse of the shank. Just kind of smear that around. And this is going to give us a nice fluorescent bottom. Get right on there. Cover all that thread. That side looks good. That side looks good. Sometimes, like I said, you know, you don't have to be super quick with it, um, but you do have to be mindful about gravity. And um, if you'll see how I have this uh, positioned, it's it's relatively flat. All right, let's go ahead and set this. I see a comment in the chat um, so the comment is bah, 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 rather new to tie fly tying haven't done a crease or a gurgler yet watched a couple of getting asked why no one puts a bright plastic bead up front when it help keep the lips in shape on the gurgler you know it doesn't I guess you could put a bead up front um, but then again you know we're also a gurgler you're wanting to keep kind of more towards the surface um, and what you're gonna want to do I don't know it have I have I done a gurgler have we done gurglers on in this in the last 50 Wednesdays I think so But no, on a gurgler, I think the water pressure is just enough to keep it keep it up top. That's an old gurgler. That's on a big old hook. And <laughs> if we look, um, you can even add little eyes if you want. <laughs> uh, those are optional. The green gurgler, man. This was this is my number number one video on on YouTube uh, it, it's it gets that green gurgler gets more views than any video it outperforms 10 to 1 easy 10 to 1 easy so let's go ahead and continue to set this and what I found um, yeah, if you want to watch the number one video for all tied up fly tying school, check out that green gurgler. For whatever reason, I have I, I can't explain it. It's not it's not a viral video by any stretch of the imagination, but it definitely gets more views than any other one. All right, so now we're going to work on the nose and the face of it. So we're going to just put it in our vise like so. And let's see if I can't readjust the camera just a little bit. I think I can go a little bit taller. 
Here we go. Actually, this is more more level like this. And what I'm going to try to do is get a couple of drops started on the inside and then just kind of work my way up and out coating the whole thing. Um, yeah, I the gurgler. I've I've caught some good, good some good smallmouth on it. Especially, um, I've had the most success with the with the gurglers, actually around here in the Sauk River. All right, let's go ahead and just fill that gap. And I'm just trying to fill any voids. I'm actually going to do this in a couple little quick two-step process. I just want to get that inside uh, any holes or voids because I want this whole thing to get you know fully sealed in. Um, once I, you know, I guess if you start getting water in there, at least it has a place to go. Um, because even though we added a little dab of weight, um, you know, those three strips of that 0 .025 uh, lead free wire, you know, we still want our flies to be relatively light uh, because we want to be able to cast the line, not the fly. That's why we fly fish. That's how the system works. Alright, I'm going to give this a little careful dance right around the eye of the hook up around the edges and if I get a little bit on the side I'm not going to lose any sleep on that because I know I can just wipe wipe it off all right, so there is the bottom sealed. The front is good. Now we'll set this. Looks good. I like it. And I can really see that I got a good, good seal. Everything's got a nice even coat on it up front. Um, so I, I think having that piece of foam, that red foam. Even though it's really not visible, I don't know. I like having it in there because um, I think it helps give us a little bit of width, a little bit of profile. All right. And last but not least, we're gonna do just the back side, right around the bucktail. Like I said, I just I don't want I don't want to invite um, the water to leak in or seep in or give it a too much of a chance. Yes, it will still be able to wick its way in through the bucktail, um, but you know I don't know what it is what it is at this point. So we're gonna leave that right about there. Is this a good angle? I'm trying to get the best angle I can for you. For you guys, still in the frame a little bit. So same thing on the back side, but I don't necessarily care if it's red or not. So I'm just going to go in with uh, some of the thin. Make sure my, because it's thin and we got things like gravity. Just gonna fill that in right back there. And we'll set it in, forget it. The rest of that's gonna get a little bit of the another clear coat over it. Alrighty then. Let's get that kind of resituated back to kind of more of a standard view. Sorry about the shakiness, the rocky rollerness. All right, so 
there we have it. There's that part of it. Told you that story to get you to this story. Hey Dave, good evening. Thanks for tuning in. We are working on our orange, orange crease fly. So what's a crease fly without eyes? I don't know. Nothing exciting. Um, do I want to go with green eyes? I really started fancying these red. Um, let me know in the chat. What do you guys think? Should I go with green eyes? Should I? I'm thinking about adding some. Uh, I want to add some stripes. So I want to get my eyes on first, and these are just sticker eyes. I, these aren't, you know, the these are not the holographic, expensive eyes. These are just the cheapo sticker eyes. We'll save this one for the pink one. That's why I pulled that one out. Let me know in the comments. Do we go green or yellow? Green or yellow? What do you think? Or do I do one of each? <laughs> Oh man, that would drive me nuts. I kind of want to go with the, I like the, uh, the holographicness of the green maybe, but whoever comments first, that's what we're going to go. Green or yellow? Green or yellow? I'm going to take a sip of coffee. Green or yellow? Let me know in the chats. First one up gets it. Green or yellow? I should get my marker ready. I think I'm going to go with uh, maybe the brown. Green for contrast. All right. Green it is. All right. Put my coffee back. And we're going to go with the green eyes. Oh, green eyes. And I don't have to add any uh, additional glue underneath these because I'm going to be uh, throwing a coat over top. I like the green. Good call on the green. Green for the win. All right, close enough to even. All right, so before I go too far with decorating on this, what I want to do is I have a little piece of scrap. And, you know, if you're ever going to color on foam and such, it's always good to take a, take a scrap. This is just a little, little runoff of when I cut this off of parent. So that's how the brown is going to come out. And let's check our, our black marker. Hmm. I think I'm leaning towards brown. Also have my poppy red. Maybe I'll add a little. Maybe we'll just stick with the brown. I kind of like the brown. We'll do black on top, and then we'll do some brown stripes. So on the tops of fish, what you typically find is you know a nice black line. So we'll just. Do a nice black line on top. And then on the sides, I'm going to do some brown. And I'm going to do, do three little stripes. 
One, two. I had no idea I was going to be making Tony the Tiger. So I'm using both hands. Uh, you'd be really surprised how much more accurate your hands can be if they're touching each other. And adding that third point of contact, uh, your, your brain and everything just works marvels. Okay, a little reference dot. There, there, and there. One stripe, two stripe. You're great. What do we think? I think that's pretty good. I think that is pretty darn good. And we'll let that set for just a moment. Um, i let that... Give it a second to dry, or should I do a? Let me know. I'll, let me know in the chat. Do I add a little bit? I like the three. Do I dare do a fourth? Just kind of leading up to the eyes. Do I connect the eyes? I don't think so. I think I'm just gonna leave that as is. All right, and then. Got one last test I want to see. All right, so I've got some fluorescent yellow. I could go over top of all that. I think I'm just going to go clear. I see it. Do you see it? I want to get that off. I can't see it unless I have the UV on. And there's like one little hair. Little fish. All right, let's go ahead and throw our clear coat on top. And like I said at the very beginning of you know messing around with these resins, you know time is it's not necessarily of the essence, but we have to work with gravity. So I'm going to position this like so. So I've got it tilted this way, but when I tilt it up, uh, because it's not a true rotary vise. I can get uh, some other angles to it. So now this is the bottom, and now that's the bottom. So I can get get a little bit of this resin kind of floating around. Um, and I'm going to use uh, the thin, thin hard this time for our. F this is going to be our top coat, but it's not going to be our our final coat because the final coat I'm going to add a layer of. Uh, bone dry. So first things first, I want to just kind of add a little bit around my eye and over the eye. Flip it over and kind of do the same over here. And I'm going to level this all out with a bodkin kind of getting some initial kind of key placements and a little bit on top because with the thin once it once it starts making good contact it really starts to settle in and find its home we're 
Stick it in around the eye. There's a key place. You can see it kind of build up a little bit. And then we'll flip it over. Work our way around the eye. I'm trying to make this nice and even and level as possible. Make sure we get the upper. Once you get it mostly covered, and you can just kind of let it let it settle into its little places. And if you need to add just a little drop here and there, just a little bit right there, a little bit right there. Just let her settle. And then we'll zap it. And when you have a big, a large amount of resin like this, we're not going to want to just blast it hard and heavy right out the gate. I'm going to let that, I'm kind of seeing a little bit slowly start to work its way down. I'm going to just keep it moving um, that way I don't get any um, any major drips. Alright, I'm going to give it a give it a couple of seconds, give it a zap, and I get a step it away, give it a little bit, because if you try to set it too much too fast you can actually over overcook it it gets too hot, it creates too much heat, and then it'll, <clears throat> it'll start delaminating right off of the, uh, right off of the fly. Oh, I didn't want to move that quite yet. So with the uh, resin that at its current state, it can still be just a little tacky, tacky to the touch, and that can be one of the major uh, critiques of UV, UV products is it can be a little bit oily or tacky. Um, so uh, the bone dry is what it is. Uh, it goes on wet and it, when it dries, when it cures, not dries, but when it cures, it's, it's really dry. And even you know with the, the flashlight, it does a really good job, but what really, what really sets it up is taking it outside and setting it in uh, some direct sunlight for a few minutes. I'm just going to give it a nice quick coat everywhere I go with this. And because this is even thinner than the thin, I really have to be mindful. Oh, don't forget the bottom. Let's be really mindful to keep the keep everything moving because if we don't, it will puddle up. And then we can set it. Set it and forget it. I don't think we're going to get three of these in tonight. So I guess this is, we're going to call this one the Tony the Tiger Crease Fly. Hey, it's great. Well, I'll tell you what, I, uh, I was uh, shopping from Aldi the other day, and they had Fruity Pebbles on, on sale on ad. And I bought myself a bowl of fruity pebbles. Oh my goodness, how how was I ever able to uh, handle that back in the day? It's craziness, craziness. All right, we got S Steve Trabowski in the house. Good evening, Steve. Thanks for tuning in. And we got the striker red coat from Southern California, but looking forward to fishing the driftless area of Wisconsin this summer. All right. Um, yeah, I have personally never have been, to, uh, never fished uh, the driftless region um, yet. Um, but I don't know. Hopefully this summer I'll be able to get out there. 
So there we go. That is our uh, crease fly number one tonight. That's about about consistent as far as how long it took me to tie the previous ones. Maybe about an hour, 45 minutes. 40 minutes if I have everything set up and ready to go. Um, let's go ahead and switch over. So what do you think? I thought it was that was a fun one. Um, it's definitely, um, especially with this one out, I'm expecting, I'm anticipating some good small mouth hits on it. And definitely, most definitely, I'm going to uh, get some pike on that. Um, and that's why I went with these. Uh, it's a Daiichi. It's a good good size hook. Uh, it's a light wire, so maybe not a uh, super big predator uh, pike. But um, I like the wide gap stinger hooks. Uh, I really became a fan of these I don't know when but these 2720s uh, are just magic absolutely magic so Southern California awesome well uh, have fun in the driftless <laughs> I wish I had some uh, good good advice um, but there's some really good fly shops uh, down and around the driftless region um, a lot of those uh, uh, shop owners uh, participate obviously in the the local fly expo the minnesota fly expo um but you know make sure uh if you do i guess if you're just staying in wisconsin then i guess you don't have to worry about um fishing licenses and whatnot for two different states but um yeah last year last year 2020 was uh the only year uh in recent times that i only ended up with uh, just the one fishing license for here in Minnesota, didn't venture into Wisconsin or anywhere, because we were on lockdown. Speaking of lockdown, next week will be our uh, our one year anniversary of doing this. Uh, it'll be 52 weeks. So today was no. If next week is 52, today would have been 51, but we missed one week. So this is this is actually our fiftieth fiftieth live stream for uh, Project Healing Waters on our Wednesday night time slot. And I was actually I was thinking about that. It's like man, um, once once we get into uh, getting back to uh, Wednesday nights face to face. I love you guys and gals, but these live streams on Wednesday nights are, are not going to be a thing. So, you know, these are, it was never intended to be a, a forever series, but um, we're going to, we're going to get into it. So, all right, we're on to, well, Dave, your comment, man, I hope, Dave Lee, your comment just came in on, on, on yellow green, on the yellow green um, question. But anywho, all right, so let's, uh, that's enough of that one. Some good coffee. I upgraded, I upgraded from my electric coffee grinder to a hand coffee grinder that I could adjust the coarseness on it. Man, makes all the difference. Who would have thought? Anyways, let's do another one. We're going to uh, do one for the, for the hot colored Bright pink. Beep bop a doop bop. Get that camera set. Boy, I really like that Tony the Tiger look. That's pretty sweet. I think uh, those green eyes really, really help too. And then it's super bright underneath. All right, let's uh, let's do another one. Yeah, that turned out a okay. So before I get my 
big old mug fingerprints all over this. Um, what I'll do is I'll actually I'll, I need to put it in a put a cork in it. Put it in the cork. And then um, tomorrow, um, if we have any sunshine, I'll be taking this out. And I don't know the other ones. I I just carried it with me out to the mailbox, check the mail. Um, all right, let's uh, reset. We're gonna do our pink one next. We're gonna do a pink one. I don't think we're going to have enough time to get into this one, but you know, it's the technique. And this foam is actually just feels just a little bit thicker. But this is the um, standard foam. It's not. It's not the. This is. I. This isn't. Uh, it's a little bit thinner. This is. Where did my pink go? So it's not, where did I get this piece? I think this is four millimeter, so this must be two millimeter. So we got to find a hook to start. Well, the question Dave just asked, have I tossed it in the tub to see if it rides properly? And my question to you would be, what is proper? Um, my first couple of experiments, uh, they floated on their side. And with the added weight, uh, they float like a popper. They sit up um top side up and hook side down um, but you know as far as what a bona fide official legit saltwater crease fly how it's supposed to float I'm not uh, really sure um, you know it's interesting there's tons and tons and tons of videos of how to tie certain flies but there is very, very minimal amount of videos on how to actually fish them. And me, I'm I'm better at teaching people how to tie flies and you know share how I do it. I'm not that good at explaining on how to fish. Um, you know, my only advice is when you're bass fishing strip set strip set keep your rod tip down Aaron keep your rod tip down Aaron that's what comes to mind um, and when I'm like nymphing it's mend your line Aaron mend your line all right we're gonna add that weight we're gonna do this in three three easy steps three easy steps 0 0.025 we're going to add a layer to the bottom underneath because I think this really helps to keep the mass nice and low And it's lead-free wire, so it's not super, super, duper, duper dense, but you know it's enough to to keel it down. Get that going a little bit, and the side it'll end up um, right in the crevasse between um, the lead-free wire and the shank of the hook. It just sits right there. Um, Oh, who was it? I'm drawing a blank. I'm looking for the book. Dave Whitlock. Dave Whitlock does something kind of like this, uh, but he does it with mono, and he does it on the sides of the shank of the hook. So you end up with, you know, almost like three shanks 
as far as width. I forget what pattern it was for, but maybe for a frog or something. But it almost it's almost kind of like a hot dog bun, kind of. Kind of, sort of, maybe. I don't have to look, but just just to satisfy our, our curiosity, here we go. So the weight is all below the shank of the hook. Nothing is above. Everything is below. And with it being a uh, good size, a proper size, you know, one knot, you know, we did not affect the hook gap at all. And I think if we, you know, you start wrapping things around, you, you get bulk all the way around and you end up with a lot of weight. But I'm not necessarily trying to add, um, you know, an, uh, an enormous amount of weight because we're not trying to sink it. We're just trying to get this to uh, ride, ride properly. And hopefully the theory is, my working theory is that, um, it should just kind of right itself as it hits and splashes the water. It might flop and land based off of wind, but ultimately once it's in the water, it should track as is with the hook hook on the bottom. All right, how about some hot pink? Hot pink for the pink. Like there's a little piece of flash in there, a little silver flash. We might roll with that concept. <clears throat> little pinch, little pinch, little twist, little pinch, little twist. Any of the super dupers, we can get rid of those. All right, let's go ahead and throw this into the stacker. Tips down. Here we go. I'm going to hit mute. All right. I got that little bit of flash out. There we go. All right. We're going to go for a hook and a little bit more. Right about there. There's one hook and just a little bit more. All right, and then I'll bump my thread right up to behind the lead wire, lead free wire. Oh, oh. what row? Forgot, this is 70. Should be going, I should be. I need to find my bigger th red thread. It's in a tub, in a box, in a bin underneath something else at the current moment. But we'll get this going lickety split. Here we go. We are hooked back up. Let's see. Do we dare? Yeah, we got enough of a bite. I think I 90% confident I, I nicked the, the tip of the hook. All right, and up top we're going to give it a diagonal cut. We'll get a little taper, little taper transition to that. It's not going to make or break anything, but steady as she goes, right? And I'm going to go underneath here with a couple of wraps. All right, I kind of like the look of that silver flashaboo. So we're going to go for just that. This is some um, silver flashaboo, 6901. 
extra limp, but not extra lame. So we're going to fold this in half. So we're going to take half as much as what we need. Trim the loops. That'll work just fine. Actually, you know what? This is about all I want for the whole fly, so I'm not going to fold it back. Unfortunately, we're going to... I think if I go like that, I don't know. We'll set it. We'll just send it. We'll just send it. There we go. All right, so that's it. We just need to bind this all down, working our way forward. And again, you know, I wish I was had a, enough of a forethought to find my bigger thread before I started all this. But as we said in the service, it is what it is. It's not what it's not, I'll tell you that for free. And all this thread it also really gives that UV stuff something to stick to. That'll be good enough. Finish this with a whip finish. And that's going to be good to go. Alright, so again I got my little inner core, my little inner piece. We're going to set that on top and set that with the uh, UV. Boy, I'm liking the way that came out. Okay, so for the first bit we're going to use our thick. The only time I use thick in the process. And you know, and, and that's a thing, you know, I guess I could, you know, reiterate is, you know, none of these products are all going to be exactly the same. So if you're not using a, a solar as product, you know, your individual results may vary. Void where prohibited, not available in all stores. May be known to cause cancer in the state of California. Sorry, guy from California. I just remembered that. <laughs> Anyways, let's uh, do a thin little bead right on top. And again, this is what's going to kind of capture and receive our top little piece of foam. A little bit more there to fill in the gap. And this is a thick don't have to go too much because when you squish down on it, it's going to muffin out. Alright, we'll take our time. And contact. And what's critical is just making sure it's centered. And level. All right. I like it. So we'll set it. So this is a, essentially it just bonds. This is a bonding the bottom. This isn't going to capture if I like, like I said before on the first one, if I started handling this uh, by that red foam, the odds are it would pop right off. Uh, because the only layer of uh, resin that's holding it is just that thin thin little bit. All right, now um, we're going to go a little thin on the sides. And here I'm just going from the side and I'm going to connect that down. And 
And I'm gonna kind of I like starting at the top. That way I got gravity on my side, and I don't have to get too close or particular with it. As long as I get some on the sides and with where the shank is. Okay, we'll give that a quick set with this. And so if you don't do all your resin all at once, it's not like I have to do this all in one big splop. You know, each time I go back and hit it with the uh, flashlight, um, you know, it just re recooks everything else. So it's not like we have to cook it all full length at the, for, you know, the very first wave of light. We know this is just on the inside. You know, it's not super, super structural critical, I suppose. Since, I don't know, I guess we are going to, this is the base for the Zappa Gap, so. And then everything's going to get sealed in and around that. Yeah, 51, 50 live streams. This makes number 50. Which is kind of kind of fitting, kind of interesting. Um, yeah, so next week will be our one-year anniversary with one week missing, and that was January 6th. It's crazy because that was Insurrection Day, as I call it, and the day we lost Internet here in... Or the Wednesday I lost internet here in St. Cloud. Half the town lost it, I suppose. But, all right, so we're ready to start kind of lining up our, our pink foam. I think I might need to trim this just a little bit on the front. My back is square, that's square. I just need to even this up just a little bit. Sometimes we are allowed to take it off. I think that'll fit us just fine. I like it. All right. Prepare to glue. Give us a little pre-fold, a little pre-crease. That way we got it going in the right direction. All right, here we go. Let's grab our Zappa Gap. Now I can tell my Zappa Gap is resealed. I can't hear any air huffing and puffing through it. But there's still glue in there, so I'm just going to keep going at it. Um, use my non-fancy bodkin and just jam that in there all right little dab of glue we're just just enough to wet it we don't want to overdo the glue just enough to smear that around down that side and a little smear on this side Get it nice and low, because that's where we're pinching this all together. Yeah, baby. And I'm going to give this a little squeeze with this. All right, here's our general profile. I'm gonna go ahead and s spin myself around and let that kind of solidify here for a minute and look into the camera. <sighs> How's everybody doing? Oh, holy smokes, there's nine of us tonight. Let me know in the chat, do you fish pink flies? Yes or no? And I think you should have to declare it like I do. I declare 
I fish pink flies and I don't care. I declare I fish pink flies and I don't care. And how can I prove that? Because I got another pink fly right here. <laughs> I wonder how many pink flies I have in my box. This is one of my one of my go-to boxes. Got some pink flies in there. Got some pink, pink, pink clousers. Other pink minnows. Then we got poppers and boppers. But yeah. I think it's been a crazy year. 2020 has been more than interesting. I think my backlight, front light is trying to self-adjust. Um, but let's continue on. I think this glue is probably solidified enough. Yeah. Spin myself around. Oh, not that one we want. That one. What if the hokey pokey was really what it was all about? All right, let's see. That's the problem with stuff in the background. The camera wants to always jump focus. All right, so we're gonna fill the gap. We're gonna go underneath and seal the bottom with uh, some of this fluorescent red again. What doesn't like a little red belly? And this is thick like a fingernail polish. And I got a big enough space I can just brush this on, start at the center, work my way out. A little dabble do me. All the way to the edge. all the way up front. I think that'll do it. I didn't even get any on the sides. So I'll make sure everything just kind of settles into the middles. Nice and even. And zap it. Purple and pink, great combo. Absolutely. All right, let that settle. Yeah, that'll be cool. A nice little hot pink belly. All right, let's transition to the top. I'll adjust Mr. Camera here. Actually, I think I can... All right, same as before. We're going to just kind of seal that all in. And this is a generous little blop. I think it's going to go a little bit less. Take a little bit off the brush. Get a good seal on the inside. You can see if there's a, a gap in between the foam bits or not. I'm going to give it a quick set before I go two bananas with it. finish sealing off the face.
Just trying to get the front. Make sure we don't get the inside of the eye of the hook. That would definitely slow down the operation. I think that'll do it. I mean, this is not this is not perfect. This is. You know, it's a hand hand painted paint job. So what do you expect? Question, do we do stripes? Do we make it a sergeant. I don't know, we'll have to see it with the eyes. And I need to add just a little bit to cover the back end. And I release the that bucktail. I don't want to activate the UV while I have everything pulled down because then it would just set with uh, it would set with the tail looking kind of sad I think that'll do all right, now we're on to eyes, and maybe I'll do stripes or not. Um, I guess I could go, I could go with a red stripe. Or just leave it black. FYI, St. Cloud Flanglers Club will start meeting on the fourth Tuesday of the month. Fourth Tuesday of the month, and that's at the VFW, I presume. Let's figure out our eyes on this one. We could go with the green eyes again. I, got, I was also thinking I could possibly do do the fancy crock. And these are, I think, glow in the dark too. Yeah, these got some glow in the dark to them. feel for color. Kind of like that green again on there. Yellow and red. All right, confirmation. Um, for the VFW, I think I might go with this yellow. I'm too indecisive right now. I think we're going to go with the green eyes again. Unless I 
We're gonna go silver. Silver eyes. If I can get these to peel off. Silver eyes for the win. All right. Ah, oh, we dropped it. Oh, don't worry about detracting me from tying sessions. I'm I'm always getting uh, distracted. Oh, what do we think? Stripes or no stripes? I'm kind of thinking of leaving this. I don't know. I like the stripes. Yeah, we're gonna do black stripes. We're going to do black stripes. So we'll do a, a spine on the top. So I'll just use the fat chisel side of the marker. And then we'll get to the point. so I can transfer that to this side. Ooh, maybe some dots. Where'd that red go? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to leave that side. Just leave it. Leave it alone. I kind of like that. Good call. Good call. All right, let's uh let's go ahead and do a coat of our thin This is going to seal everything all in, and I did want to angle this just a little bit. That way when we do get runny, when we do get a case of the runs, it won't run off too fast. You know what I didn't do is I didn't wait any amount of time after paint drawing 
all over this and gooping this on so there's a probability, a possibility that this is gonna kind of start mixing but nope doesn't look too bad. So we'll make sure we get a nice seal in and around the eyeballs. And again, we're not concerned so much about time and how long it cures as we are with gravity at this point. We're just looking for a nice smooth and even layer. And I can see some dry spots with the, uh, you know, it's like the lack of glare. So we'll just, just a little bit more, a couple of spots. All right, we'll let gravity do its thing at this point, I think. I do gotta get some up top. I think that should do us pretty good. Come on, gravity. See just a little bit of a excess right here. All right, give it a couple zap zaps. clear coat of uh, bone dry on top of that really helps set that in so 50 live streams ago this Wednesday night started with uh, blackhead poppers We've been having fun ever since. Doing the best we can with what we have. I'm just making that flow all the way around. So yeah, uh, a little, a little bit of uh, sunshine, and this will be good to go. Uh, let's see here. Steve asked, uh, came in late a little bit. My coating was thin. Yes, um, and I've gone with a couple of different, uh, different applications. I do the thick to put on the uh, first wedge, and then from there on, it's uh, thin. Um, the colored resin, the fluorescent red, that goes on. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's pretty thick. Um, you know, it doesn't quite drip drop off. I also, on some other ones, I did uh, the fluorescent chartreuse which is a beautiful color too. You should see that with the, that looks really good over the green. Oh, you know, I could have done that with, uh, I 
I've got a sparkle violet that would have looked pretty neat on top of this, but yeah, some time in the sun is all this needs. A little time in the sun help help that set. So that is my version of a crease fly. Um, you know, I put a lot of thought into, you know, the adding the weight and trying to figure out how to get it to, to float and swim just right. Um, but yeah, I think we did all right. I think I can stick him in there. I like the tiger. I think that's... I like the spots. I like the way the spots came out on that. Um, but I really like the tiger stripe. <laughs> uh, the flex, I think it's... Uh, when it comes to this final application, um, I think it's a, a what do I want to say? Uh, ooh, a lateral line of a hollow tinsel. Oh man, I like that idea. Um, you could almost just uh, run a, th a little bit of. Or some pearl flash. Yeah, that'd be cool. Imagination is your only limitation when it comes to this, ladies and gentlemen. Imagination is your only limitation. Um, you know, ultimately, kind of going back to uh, Steve's question about using the flex. Um, you know, I think if I were to have used flex on any of that, it would have been right back here at the very very back end. Um, I like using flex kind of on spun deer hair flies and stuff like that um, but for the most part you know it's a pretty solid fly. Uh, I'm not going for the foaminess squishiness of it um, per se but we shall see. But anyways we definitely do not have enough time to crank one out in 10 minutes. That's not going to happen. Um, but yeah, 50 live streams. Um, I hope we don't have to do 50 more. Um, that's, I guess that's kind of up to us as, uh, as whoever. Uh, Project Healing Waters is starting to uh, test a couple of pilot programs, a couple of uh, uh, local programs. I'm not sure where they are or how they're doing it or anything about that, but they are... Um, Project Healing Waters is doing a great job at uh, communicating that uh, there nothing has really changed. Um, there's not there, what I don't know what I can ask headquarters to tell me what exactly is going on because um, you know even if they did say yeah you're good to go tomorrow um, I, I wouldn't personally be able to do that until you know I've been vaccinated and all that jazz because what what's the point of all this if if it's you know we just let it all go there at the at the very end um, but you know that being said you know I am really really looking forward to face-to-face -face tying and teaching teaching and tying um, and getting together with folks again um, so the fly club meeting will be the fourth Tuesday uh, James I'll be sending you I'll be giving you a, uh, a message or a call here I don't know, probably in the next few days. I did get an alert from FedEx that uh, things are getting backed up. Everything's getting backed up. Weather's screwing everything up. Um, yeah. So, all right. Well, I think we're going to leave this at that. Um, questions, comments, concerns, always feel free to... Uh, 
leave me a comment in the comment section afterwards. Um, I always appreciate anything that comes through. Uh, you know, all I typically get are the spammers that want you to click on whatever link that takes you to wherever. I don't even know. Uh, but it's, it's, it's interesting. Shortly after the videos get um, released as a video format, after the live stream, after it all processes, it's just bam, instantly, five, six, you know, report user, bye bye, report user, bye bye. But uh, yeah, give it a try. It's just a little bit of foam, a little bit of bucktail, a little bit of glue, you know, whatever you use, you know, that's, it doesn't have to be the Solar Res UV products. Um, experiment, experiment, experiment. You know, it, it took me a little while to come up with the little pattern. Uh, you know, obviously my shapes and sizes aren't exact. Uh, they do sell the foam cutters. I think uh, River Road Creations is the brand name uh, that makes them. And they uh, the same company that I got my hopper legs and some other uh, foam punches from. Uh, they sell a crease fly, um, which is basically a thing that punches out that. So, um... I don't know what we're going to tie next week. Um, I don't know if we want to revisit anything. Maybe we should do... Uh, next week will be the one year. One year anniversary of tying from home. Maybe we should Maybe we should just have a woolly bugger mania. See how many woolly buggers we can crank out. Because you can never have too many woolly buggers. I don't know. All right, well, we're going to leave it at that. Thank you all for watching. Please stay healthy out there. Please stay safe. Happy tying. Yeah, sure, you betcha. Tight lines. Peace.